ABC shops, centres and DVD retailers. You're with Nick Reinberg in 97.3 ABC Illawarra. We uh, have brought you the story of the Algae Tech facility uh, in the Shoalhaven before. It could be said that uh, algae is the way forward for sustainable production of uh, biofuels. Uh, if you think of uh, the kind of production resources that go into, say, producing wheat that turns gets turned into ethanol, or even corn, it's nothing compared to the efficiency of algae. The, 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 uh, the problem is harnessing that oil-producing algae and turning that into uh, biofuels. Well, the Algae Tech Company are working right around the world uh, apparently, they recently signed an agreement with Lufthansa to produce aviation biofuels. So it is being used in the real world. Uh, we've been told that Mike Kelly, the Federal Parliamentary Secretary for Defence and member for Eden Monero, is checking out the Algae Tech facilities in Bombardier today. And uh, he's joins, he joins us now here at 97.3 ABC. Hello, Warren Mornings. Mr. Kelly, good morning. Good morning, Nick. How are you doing? Where does this fit into your portfolio? It's, it's not your area... Uh, geographically as such, uh, are you looking at creating fuels for use in defence? Uh, yes, we are actually. And uh, look, uh, Nick, I've got a passion for renewable energy myself, so I'm always interested anyway. And we've been working, developing a regional strategy for building our renewable energy industry, and, and it's working really well at the moment. We've got over a billion dollars of investment flowing into the region and working in with our tertiary institutions uh, to make us uh, the flagship for renewable energy in the nation and getting research happening along with that. But certainly from the defence point of view, um, we see our future as going down the biofuels road. Uh, you might have seen news reports not long ago about uh, the US Navy's intentions and US defences uh, for not pioneering of aviation fuels in that respect. And uh, certainly we will be very interested in that because we share a lot of platforms with the US in terms of uh, aviation vessels and the like. Uh, and I'll bring you with me today on this visit Colonel Mark Harnwell, who's the Director of Joint Fuels and Lubricants, and Dr George Favis, the Chief Engineer, Joint Fuels and Lubricants Agency, uh, to have a look at, um, at what's going on and where they're up to here. But there's some... Uh, are they within the Defence Department? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Yeah, three well, officials. Joint right. Fuels and Lubricants. So it's, it's that important that we've got people whose title you know, mm -hmm. you know, encompasses these subjects. Oh, absolutely. Uh, everybody, I think, would appreciate that a large defence organisation really runs on fuel, um, and certainly we are the largest uh, carbon footprint in uh, the Commonwealth the Defence Department. Uh, obviously, our, all of our vehicles, the massive vehicle fleet, our naval vessels and our aircraft are uh, all large consumers of uh, fuels. So uh, this has great implications, though, for the rest of the country, because uh, as interesting as electric vehicles are, and I really think they'll be a big part of uh, a metro and, and uh, commuter solutions in the future, there are a lot of aspects of fuel consumption that can't depend on electric. So your fishing vessels, your major long haulers, your farm and council plant and engineering and, uh, and uh, major industry plant will all continue to depend on some sort of diesel solution. And the beauty of this technology is that it doesn't threaten food security, as you mentioned. And uh, what's even more important is our big coal-fired generators should really be proactively reaching out to a company like Algae Tech because this algae is carbon hungry. It can greatly accelerate its growth by plugging it into a coal-fired power station and harvesting those emissions. Well, you can take carbon dioxide emissions, I mean, if you can scrub the particulates out of them for a start, but and that if you can purify it, mm -hmm. you, can, you can send it uh, to... Uh, an algae farm such as this and accelerate the growth of the algae? Yep, they can be co-located with the coal-fired power station. I've seen this in operation in Israel. I visited a site where they were doing this at the Ashkelon power station, similar in scale to our power stations, and basically a very simple technology. Um, in fact, the technology that algae tech's using is even better than that because it's very water efficient and very space efficient using this uh, contained uh, Photo, uh, well, take, it was photo, um, a synthetic process mm -hmm. within shipping containers. And so, uh, effectively, what you do, you harvest that carbon emission, greatly accelerate the growth of the algae and your production, but also you significantly abate the emissions from the coal fired power station. So, using Algae Tech's technology, we could abate, you know, over 80% of the emissions from a coal fired power station. Well, there's no power stations near Bombardieri. Uh, no. What, what will it take to get them built? 
in the Latrobe Valley or in the, in the Hunter? Well, all it would take would be a uh, imaginative, innovative coal-fired power generator to reach out to this technology. The Chinese are actually doing that now. What, to say, we've got a bit of land, come on down? Absolutely, and we want to abate our emissions. We want to take advantage of the assistance the Commonwealth's providing, uh, and we want to uh, save money because if you do this, it means you're not suffering the penalties under the carbon price regime. And it can keep them going for years ahead without polluting our environment. So uh, this is a win-win for a coal-fired power station and they should be reaching out to Avitech to take advantage of this uh, technology. Well, but before we get to that point, though, I understand that you know, it is these big contracts that keeps companies like uh, Algae Tech going. Uh, would the Defence Force look at getting some sort of guaranteed continuous supply of biodiesel to put in their vehicles? Well, look, this is a very important point for me, Nick. Um, I'm very concerned about energy security, and more and more our fuel supplies are running out, and within 15 to 20 years, we'll be getting 80% of our supplies from overseas, which means more and more, in fact, out of the Middle East. And you know the vulnerabilities to supplies out of there mm. and the political weapon they often use it for, and also a lot of that money ends up sometimes uh, funding unhealthy uh, uh, agencies like terrorists and the like uh, down the track. So... We could do ourselves a big favour by creating energy security here in Australia, so that's an important point. But the US are moving down this road, and in the um, RIMCAP, RIMPAC exercise we were recently involved in with them, we could actually uh, use some of the alternative fuels in a, a RAND Seahawk aircraft, so a uh, helicopter. So uh, we're keen to um, partner up with the US, and, uh, and what we do is we're what we call a fast follower. Uh, in that respect, uh, in, in the direction they go, we closely follow behind because quite often they've got the resources to do the extensive testing um, and uh, trialling of these types of fuels that uh, we wouldn't be able to afford to do. So we keep a close eye on what they're doing and then we move in quickly. Well, if they're making fuel or you know, bio-aviation fuel mm -hmm. uh, for Lufthansa, it sounds like a... It's not a huge step to uh, to turn it into uh, into avgas. No, that's right. And in fact, it's being done. And the US is using it uh, in some of their aviation uh, assets at the moment, continuing those trials. But also, the Navy, US Navy, is going to be a huge consumer, and they're looking for supplies in Australia to enable them to uh, to do their refueling and porting uh, operations in that respect. So, Algae Tech's got a big opportunity there too, and certainly. You know, what we're seeing with them now is that they're extending their relationships with not only Lufthansa but Wholesome here in Australia, the Mildred Group and Shandong Kerry uh, in China. And um, now they've even reached out, of course, to uh, have uh, uh, feasibility studies in Texas, Brazil, China, Sri Lanka and Germany and, and another site in New South Wales. So I think uh, in the region here we should be very proud of them. And, um, and the beauty of, of it is, of course, uh, they can be set up anywhere, so you can have a regional network and reduce distribution costs as well for uh, this sort of biodiesel product, and that would be jobs in rural and regional Australia uh, like ours. Mm. All right, Mike Kelly, good to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much. No worries, Nick. Cheers, mate. Mike Kelly is the Federal Parliamentary Secretary for Defence, former military uh, officer himself, and a member for the uh, Eden Monero here at 97.3 ABC Illawarra. You realise we have to learn these things, don't you? I mean, there's Monaro and there's Monero. Monaro is the car. They sound the same. Monaro, car. And uh, Monero is the area. It was only pointed out to me. I used to get that, I get that wrong all the time until someone pointed out that nice little mnemonic about a year ago. Oh, it was like a... It was like a breath of fresh air. It was, oh, thank God, I don't have to worry about offending all of the people of the Monero area. You see? Sounds the same. Letting you into all these secrets today. Uh, coming into uh, four minutes, three and a half minutes away from 11, just enough time for a bit of Paul Kelly. So enjoying his latest album. Darling, you're one for the age.